Hi, I'm Carol Ann Wilson, and my personal essay, The Girl from Coke, was published in Under the Gum Tree in October of 2020. The Girl from Coke comes from an experience that I had when my late husband and I lived in Meridian, Mississippi for a few months in 1967 in the midst of the Civil Rights Movement. Um, my husband, Ron, was um, training. He was in the Marine Corps. He was training in jets, and that landed us in Meridian for those months. And while there, I learned about an advertising campaign with the Coca-Cola company called The Girl from Coke. And the campaign was um, based on, a, on the idea of the man from UNCLE. Some of you will remember that. Uh, it was the United Command for Law and Enforcement that battled dangerous force, forces threatening peace, um, a TV series. So I thought I had a red Camaro that I drove around and I was to work a hundred mile radius of Meridian because the plant serviced that whole area. I thought I would be doing that alone, but then I learned uh, that a man named Rusty, who was on, on the distribution route, would be going with me. Because as Mr. Chambers, the boss, explained, there had been a lot of trouble out in the smaller towns. So I'll read just a couple of things from that experience. I had some idea of the trouble, the core of which was the Civil Rights Movement's effort to get the black citizens registered to vote and the reaction of white Southerners to that effort. But that summer in 1967, I didn't know the extent of the repercussions. I didn't know of the many African Americans who were threatened, beaten, who lost their jobs, whose homes and churches were burned, whose lives were taken in brutal ways. When the Voting Rights Act was passed in 1965, some of the legal barriers to registration fell away, but the attitudes remained as did far too many acts of brutality. Fewer than 7% of Mississippi's eligible black citizens were registered to vote. That was more than 16% below the national average. But in just five years of the registration drive, the number surpassed the national average by 5.5%, with 66.5% registered. Almost 50 years later, this fact would be recorded on, the, on marker six of Meridian Civil Rights Trail. Rusty and I decided to take back roads on our way to the little town of Nellieburg. Dogwood, cypress, magnolia, and live oak draped, draped with Spanish moss bordered the road, sometimes forming a canopy overhead. Dappled light created by the graceful trees played before us, shape-shifting with the occasional breeze. The break in the trees on one long straight stretch opened onto a huge field with rows and rows of corn, beans, and okra. Eight or so men and women were out working with hoes and shovels. When they saw the red Camaro, they dropped their tools as if they were one and started running. A couple of them pointed at the car, shouting and waving. We pulled up in the yard at the first house, a small weather-beaten construction that leaned a little bit to the left. As I got out, I saw one of the women from the field running to the back door. In seconds, the front door opened and she stood there panting and laughing. I smiled and then laughed with her as I negotiated the wobbly stairs to the porch, stopping to consider the huge hole before me. The boards had rotted away, leaving the porch all but impassable. Just edge yourself around this way and you'll be all right, she told me. I edged myself around as she watched, her hands on her hips, and a beautiful smile that left, never left her face. Lordy, lordy, I never expected the girl from Coke to come all the way out here, she said, shaking her head back and forth. I just can't believe it. But I'll bet you have just what you need to win some of this money, I heard myself saying. She did, but only a carton, which would have earned her $10. If you write, two cartons of Coca-Cola on a paper and give it to me. You'll win $30, I said. But ma'am, I don't know how to write. If you give me a pencil and some paper, I'll show you, I said. The day we went through Marion, Rusty and I had been taking turns driving, and my turn had come up for the next stretch. Segregated as all the towns were, this town's black population 
lived near the old downtown. Our route took us down the main street where we saw groups of men standing around the edges of the street and on sidewalks. As we drove by, it felt as if they all turned to stare at the two of us in the bright red Camaro with this girl from Coke sign sitting on top. The stares didn't feel friendly. I knew, along with everyone else, that a big trial had been set for October in Meridian. Three years earlier, the white knights of the Ku Klux Klan had brutally beaten and killed three civil rights worker in neighboring Neshoba County. When the FBI arrested 18 men a few months after the murders, state prosecutors refused to try the case, claiming there wasn't enough evidence. But then the federal government stepped in and a trial for seven of the men was set for October in Meridian. The men in the street didn't make way for our car and I slowed the Camaro to a crawl. His voice firm and low, Rusty said, put your window up, lock your door, and drive just a little faster. The hair on the back of my neck stood up and the stares from the men sent chills down my spine. I did as Rusty instruct instructed and navigated the car as carefully as I could past the onlookers. Past town, we both breathed deeply. What was that about, I asked. That back there is a good example of why the company sent me along, Rusty told me. That's the trouble we're worried about. What do you mean? I wanted Rusty to spell it out. Since Mississippi has the biggest colored population of any of the states and the lowest number registered to vote, it might be more of a target than most southern states. I don't know much, but I do know a bunch of northerners have been in the area for a while now, trying to register people to vote. The white folks haven't taken too kindly to that, and the colored folks are pushing back. Tension permeated my very, the very air, and I was glad Rusty was willing to be candid. Most Southerners preferred not to talk about racial matters to a Northerner, as they would say, although I was from the West. But there, if you weren't from the South, you were from the North. In certain matters, there was no east or west. Um.